Right, obviously, you're still interested in this shit. Fuck knows why, but this is BS7671, the brown book at the minute, the 18th edition, Amendment 2. However, as I stated in the previous video, it's not going to be about the book, it's going to be how to use the book. So you'll be able to use this in the future. These are for navigating and working your way around the book. And I'm going to tell you all about it, and you're probably thinking, who's this guy telling me what to do? Well, funnily enough, when I was teaching, I had this PowerPoint slide that we go through now. This is an introduction to me and what I do, so you can sit there, sleep sound in your bed at night knowing I'm not just some flabby nighter who's uh, ripping you off, even though this shit's free. Funnily enough, it's called, well, it would be if I could click on it, it's called, Who the Fuck Are You and Why Are You Telling Me What To Do? It used to be called, Who Are You and Why Are You Telling Me What To Do? But I don't work in training anymore, so there's no one to complain about a swear word, so ball bag so who the fuck am i and why am i telling you what to do well i'm not telling you what to do for a start i'm just going to tell you some stuff about the 17th edition um this is the course admin now this is a load of shit because obviously i'm not teaching this at a school you're on the internet um the timings are as long as it fucking takes you can have a break whenever you want because you can pause the video the toilets is your own toilet make sure you clean up after you finish your dirty fucking tramp your tea and coffee is wherever you keep your tea and coffee the local amenities of whatever shops you've got around your house you can smoke wherever you want, to be honest. Um, well, I did that when I was at college anyway. Uh, medical, I don't really care because this is a video. And if there's a fire or an emergency, I still suggest that they leave your house and get outside and call the emergency services. You can do questions at any time. That's still valid. I'll do my social media shit at the end. So if you want to do some questions to me or correct me or tell me I'm wrong, I'm, feel free to do that. Because, to be honest, I couldn't give a fuck. So, about me. I am a working electrical engineer. I'm still a working electrical engineer now. Um, I've been dabbling with training since 2016. Obviously, I'm not dabbling with training anymore because I've got, I've got a job, which is why I'm producing these videos because I don't want this knowledge to get lost. I'm a GRB graded technician, gold card motherfucker, and a contracts manager, black card motherfucker. I can't spell. So if you see any spelling errors in these PowerPoints, um, write them down on a bit of paper and chuck it in any bin. It'll get to me. Anyhow, my work in education. So I have been a working sparker. I'm from Nottingham, so anyone from Nottingham may recall some of these companies. I started my time with Canon Electrical in 1999, which seems like a fucking long time ago, because it was a fucking long time ago. I then moved on to Good Martin Hurst House. Anyone from Nottingham will remember that they were the last big electrical company owned by a person in Nottingham. They were owned by Trevor Hurst House when I worked there. Uh, they're not anymore, they're called Imtech, and they knacker up football stadiums, apparently. I then went to work for Blue Circle Cement. As a process control engineer type thing, slash electrician, slash dog's body. Thought I could do it better. My boss said, well, if you think you can do it better, go on your own. So I did for 20 years, and I'm still there now at this point of recording. Um, I'm a British Army Royal Engineers electrician as well, reservist. So if you're ex-regular, you can call me a fat stab as loud as you like in your own house for this video. Uh, I worked at BA Systems and Mercedes F1. They're on there because they pimp. I didn't work there for long. I did projects there. But the pimp projects I've done, because I've done some pimp projects and they'd be a bit wank if I didn't put uh, all the good stuff as an electrician in my time. So that's why they're there. Uh, I'm just showing off, so fuck you. My trading, so about me. I qualified to the 16th edition in 2002, which again, seems like a long time ago because it was 20 years ago. Holy fuck. And I qualified to amendment one of that edition. And what a fantastic edition it was. Very long and not very complicated like we're getting now. In 2001, as a third year apprentice, I completed my 2391. And after new to say when I was training, I did the hard one with the written exam, not the easy one like you do now. Sorry, lads and lasses that are doing it now. Somehow, I was apprentice of the year in 1999 for Loughborough College. I don't know how because I was having to drink and drugs at the time, but I, I cracked it anyway. Then I requalified to the 17th edition, Amendment 1, 2, and 3. And up until recently, I had the highest score at the Royal School of Military Engineering in Chatham, where I retook my 18th edition in a year I can't remember, but I got 100% in something like 22 minutes, and then someone ran me up and said someone beat me by getting it faster, so yeah, I was fuming about that. Um, am I a particularly great electrician? I don't know, but you're not, because you're watching me talking about it. Ah! I am a scumbag electrician though, and I'm proud of that fact. I'm proud that I'm on the tools working spark here, and when I was training, I was always doing some work on my side as well, because I think you get rusty, I'm not one of the people that's a failed sparker that's gone on to do trading and just sits there talking shit about what they've done uh, from the 60s or 40 years ago. I've always been working. And on that page, I've got a few of my favourites. Uh, top left, that's the Cement Works. Big VFR drive. 
That one there is me out in the Falklands replacing 11 kV substation. That's a hangar at Marham where I was working on the F-35 project refurbishing stuff. That's a totally set up photo of me wearing some PP that the employer went fucking mad about. Hence why it's in there now so they can go mad about it again. That's me recreating a famous Steve Brody Falls and Horses. That's the only picture I've got from Mercedes F1 because them shit, they are fucking serious about cameras in that place. Uh, that's Barrow Offshore Windshaw, which is the better than Barrow because Barrow's a fucking shithole. And that is where they make secret nuclear underwater boats. That is where the secret nuclear underwater boat comes out of when you've made it. The reason that picture's there is because that's taken off a bridge because that's the only chance you've got to get a camera in that place. So yeah, I've been about, I've done loads of stuff and uh, ever needed to use the regs? Yeah, I have. All the time, when I'm designing stuff, I use the regs, I reference it, and I'm a big fan, as you're going to find out, of referencing, which I'm going to talk about in a video all of its own. But referencing is the secret to being competent, in my opinion, and you should definitely learn how to use it. And I'm going to teach you how to reference and use this book so it will always be useful to you, like it's always been useful to me when I'm arguing with people on site about who's right and who's wrong. And uh, if you're just bashing asses, or you just fit out, no, tease maids, or ceiling lights or bathroom fans or whatever will you need to use the regs maybe not maybe every edition comes out you just change what you do and look at what you do but my aim is that no matter where i get sent on a job i can look at the job analyze what's going off and put it to that book and use that book to ensure that i'm being compliant and i've got some top cover from people suing me because i've done something wrong or unsafe because i'll just go no it's in the regs that's how i work it and that's how i've always worked it this is just something I have at college. The last position I was down to mine. Uh, why did I go and work down to mine? Well, because I love engineering and I love going into weird new environments and electrical engineering has took me to loads of weird new environments. So when they rang me and said, I've got a job, it's 20 quid now. I was like, fuck off. Then as soon as he said, it's down to mine, I was like, yeah, boy. So I went straight down there. It's an interesting environment. Everything's done a little bit differently. The regs don't really get used and I like embracing and in encouraging people to go into these weird kind of situations and see these weird kind of electrical installations that you get in places like this. What's quite funny is every now and then it's like seeing Thunderbirds. Uh, there's some switch in the background. Oh, crazy, crazy mind shit. That little dot there is about a mile away, which is uh, makes you think about your safety when you're down there. And uh, just going into different environments like that is a good way to learn different trades. So hopefully... That's proved to you that I know what I'm doing, roughly, and I, I can walk the walk, talk the talk. I'm not just some shit-ass tutor that's gave up in the third year of his college and teachers, hopefully. I'm also an electrical engineer for the armour, which I won't dive into too much because I don't like talking about it, but I thought I'd better put it in. So there's me doing army electrical engineering, actually doing some work there. There's me playing around with firearms, which is not advised, but I'm doing it safely. There's me pretending to batter bad guys in built-up environments. There's me actually doing some work out in Gibraltar, um, doing some advice to the Ministry of Defence. And I was on DIY SOS. Uh, if you want to know someone's been on DIY SOS, don't bother asking them. They'll tell you. So yeah, I've been all over, done all sorts of cool stuff. Here's a quick little ditty on safe isolation I like to stick in there. <laughs> if the spanner don't bounce back, it's dead, kids. So I'm here to get your knowledge and skills required to pass this course. This is a legacy of classroom teaching, but I am here to give you some knowledge and skills you are required to pass the BS 76M1 course. And why am I doing this? I'm not going to make any fucking money out of it. Of course, YouTube doesn't like people that swear, cunt. And um, it's just that I've taught this course a lot now. I've had a lot of feedback of a lot of students. So I know where people struggle and I've adapted my teaching style to reflect that. And by the end of teaching, or when I was teaching this course last, I had a pretty good success rate. Not just to getting people through the exam, because I think that's bullshit, but actually getting people to use and understand the regulations so that they can use it in their normal working life and pass the course and use the book, which is what I'm all about. So I'm not here to get you for an exam because you're not doing a fucking exam with me. I couldn't give a shit about my pass rate. I'm here to give you some knowledge and skills to pass a course. So you can take that as a gospel now because uh, I ain't getting paid for this shit. This shit's free. Here's my top tips for any course. Utilise these in all courses you go on, yeah? I will cover the top one a lot more than I'm going to, yeah? But you've got a brain. Otherwise, you won't be breathing. You'd be dead in a hole. You've got a memory. Yeah, memories are great for remembering when you was clubbing when you was younger. And uh, things you did that were cool and activities you've done and great places you've been. But it's not great for electrical engineering. It's not great for any engineering because things change. I'm not interested in your brain. 
or your memory. What I'm interested is in your ability to reference, and that's what I'm going to teach in this online course. How to reference a book to find out a piece of information you want to know. And that means that you can use those referencing skills you're going to learn in any book, in all books. The on-site guide, the other books that are on this box below my feet that I'm not going to start dragging out. But you'll be able to use these referencing skills to use all different books, like I have to. I don't just use the regs. I use the on-site guide. I use documentation provided by manufacturers. I use catalogs. I use specific documents for specific environments. And I use them in a way that I'm going to teach you now that I use this book to gather information, gather data, and use it to produce designs or projects that work and are safe. So I'll be talking a lot about referencing, and I'll tell you a little funny dit about referencing in a minute. So the books, or in this case, this book, yeah? Use the index at the front and the contents pages. They are the kingpin, and I'll be going into them later on. And know the books. That doesn't mean every single page. That means know your way around the book. In this book, you need to know what the parts are. What part one is, what part two is, what part three is, what part four is, because they will help you answer questions. And I'll go into that shortly in another video. Again, another point is that terminology is very important. I had to stop there because someone ran me on the telephone. But anyway, terminology is very, very important in this game. There's a whole part in the regs dedicated to it because things that sound very similar, earth bonding, equipotential bonding, bonding, I don't know, all these things, phasers, dogs walking off now, poles, they all sound very similar, but they all mean different things. In some cases, totally different things in different aspects. So remember, terminology is very important to you. Make sure you're using the right terminology because you need to know the terminology. When you're reading a question in an exam, it will be written in a certain type and style of writing in a certain terminology. And it's okay and good to embrace into that terminology when you're doing electrical stuff so you know what you are dealing with. And you'll get that when you start reading some of the exam questions I'm going to put out. That that is something you need to learn to read that's a bit different to what you're used to. Uh, home learning is very important. Of course it fucking is because this is a video and that's all you're doing. And this is a... You're not going to do an exam with me. You're going to do an exam somewhere hopefully don't panic about an assessment or an exam a sitting guild exam if you don't pass it you haven't got to resit the entire course you can just go and resit the exam you can come away regroup think about where you was good think about where you was bad relook at those points and you can go back and do it again at the minute it's about 50 quid to do a resit who cares 50 quid ain't worth getting stressed out about and that's why i want to make sure these videos are in small lumps apart from this one and you can just go back to that section and look at it and see how you can do it better next time. This is a thing that I use when I'm teaching and I really, really like it. It got taught to me by the army on a teaching course and it's retention rates. I think it's called the learning pyramid. Basically, what it's showing you is that if you get lectured, which is pretty much what I'm doing on this video, if I speak to you, you'll retain 5% of the information that's given to you. If you read it, you'll retain 10% of the information that's given to you. If you do it audio-visual, you'll retain 20% of the information given to you. If you get a demonstration, you'll get 30% retained. If you discuss it as a group, fifth day, perhaps by doing 75 and teaching others, which is why I become very confident with the regs, because when I was teaching others, I'd retain 90% of the information. What you need to remember is, you're getting lectured, you're going to be reading the book, you're doing it audio-visually, and you can discuss it with your friends, so you can add them percentages together and get a good amount of it, yeah? But that is how people learn stuff. It's no good going on a course where they just bang you with PowerPoint all day. Bang, 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 bang. You won't learn anything. This video is a set of tips. And I just think reading the regs out to people and explaining the whole entire regs book to them doesn't get you anywhere. You need to be able to reference it. And that, as I keep saying, is what this video is all about. But it's an interesting thing on how people retain information, I find. That's it. That's it for this one. I've explained myself. I've explained who I am, why I'm here, what we're doing, why I'm doing it like this. They're all my social media channels because I fucking don't know. Go on there. Tell me it's good. Tell me it's bad. If you scan that QR code, it'll take you to a link tree. Add me on LinkedIn. Fucking find me on Instagram or Twitter where I'm being a gobshite most of the time. I'm on YouTube. You know that because you're on YouTube now. But I hope this has been informative to you. There's a few tips in there. I'm going to cover all that stuff again in the little videos. This has been a bit of a big one. I'm looking at 15 minutes now, but hopefully in the actual regs videos now, I'm going to concentrate on very short, sharp things that will get you through the regs. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. 
please feel free to use these social medias and send me a dog shit through the post. See you later.